if you want to try your luck at a rare drop mount but want something that has some kind of reasonable chance of dropping unlike the 0.03% chance heavenly annex cloud serpent then this mount video may be for you as I'm going to be running through some rare drops that have a somewhat reasonable chance of dropping and some of them you may even get within your first few kills. The first mount up we're going to talk about will be the Swift White Hawk Strider. This is on about a 4% drop chance, which if you compare it to some of the other dungeon and raid drops, it's fairly nice as they're generally around like a 1-2% to drop chance. This is going to come from a very easy dungeon to clear as well, which is Magister's Terrace. You'll find that on the Isle of Queldenas. And this can only be run on heroic difficulty, meaning you can only have one chance per character per day. But if you have other characters, feel free to run this place. It comes from the very last boss, Kelfast Sunstrider. And as I said, 4% chance, so somewhat reasonable at having a chance of getting this mount drop. The next mount up we're going to talk about will be the Green Proto Drake. And this is on about a 6% drop chance from the Mysterious Egg. The Mysterious Egg is an item you can buy from the Oracles faction once you're revered. And the way this works is once you buy the egg, it'll sit in your bag for three days. It'll hatch, you'll be able to open it, and you'll have a 6% chance of getting the mount. So very chill, like you just go to the vendor, you buy the egg, you check it every three days. It doesn't really require much effort from your end, and eventually you will get yourself that mount. If you've not unlocked the oracles, then what you'll want to do is head to Sholazar Basin in Northrend. Head to the center, which is River's Heart, and there'll be an NPC that will give you the quest called the Part-Time Hunter. You'll follow that chain through it. First, you'll be helping the uh, puppy men and eventually you'll end up helping the oracles. If you get stuck at any point during this chain, then chances are what's happened is you just need one of the followers. You'll get a follower for most of these quests. If you don't have the item in your bag, just check the various NPCs in the main camps. They'll probably have an item they'll give you, which will summon the follower, and the follower will typically have a quest for you to give or hand in, and that's where a lot of people get stuck. Once you go through this entire chain, right at the end, you'll have to pick one of them to kind of kill and one to save, and you want to make sure it is the puppy man you're killing and the oracle you're saving which will then unlock the oracle's faction and you'll go to their base and do their dailies every day until the point where you hit revered and then you can buy the eggs it really doesn't take much time or effort to do this grind and as i said six percent chance once again fairly reasonable we've got another egg to talk about and that will be the primal egg now this will give a mount a hundred percent chance when you open the egg it'll give you either the red the green or the black primal raptor the tricky side is getting the egg to drop. It is on a fairly low drop chance, but it drops from pretty much any mob on the Isle of Giants, which is north of Pandaria. You'll head over there and you'll just start killing mobs. And whenever I'm farming this egg for all accounts or for footage, it normally takes me between 15 and 30 minutes to get my hands on one. And for a guaranteed mount, I really don't think that's too bad at all. Now, one downside is once you've gotten one of these mounts, there is a chance for you to get a duplicate again in the future. So say you get the Black Primal Raptor, there's a chance when you get your next egg, you'll get another Black Primal Raptor. But head out to the Isle of Giants, start killing mobs there. If you have any competition, I'd try and group up with them because there's no real negative to grouping up. And I don't know why more people don't do this, but farm the egg with someone else. And you know, it's it means you're not competing with someone for the kills. And then eventually you will get your Primal Egg drop. Now there is one other thing to note as well. This egg is unique, so once you've got one in your bags, you cannot loot another one. But what you could do if you want to grind out more eggs is log on to an alt, send that over to the island and start grinding again because all of your characters can have their own eggs. And then after a few days, three days, the egg will hatch and you'll be able to open it into your guaranteed mount. While we're still in Pandaria, there is another rare drop chance mount I wanted to mention as well, actually three of them. And those are going to be the primordial dire horns. They'll be the slate dire horn, the amber dire horn and the jade dire horn. These are all going to drop from the Warbringers spread across Pandaria. There's five Warbringer spots in total, one in Kunlai Summit, one in the Jade Forest, another in Krasarang Wilds, another over in Dread Wastes, and then the final one will be found in Town Long Steps. And the drop chance of the mounts from these will be around a 4-ish percent drop chance, just above that. And the respawn timer on these is going to be about 30 to 60 minutes. So when you get a kill, once you know when it last died, it's kind of easy to get more kills from there. And the nice thing about these is you can kill as many as you can find in one day. So, you know, there's no lockouts, there's no once per character kind of thing. If you can find 10 of them in a day, you can kill all 10 of them and still have a chance of getting those mounts. Now, the nice thing about killing these as well is even if you don't get a mount, you will be getting reputation tokens for some of the other Pandaria factions, such as the Golden Lotus, and these award mounts too. So you're getting a nice little double dip. 
One final thing to mention as well is the Warbringers will only drop the mount that they're currently riding on. So if you already have the Slate Diahorn and you find a Warbringer that's on the Slate Diahorn, he will only drop the Slate Diahorn. So if a mount does drop, you're going to be disappointed because it will be a duplicate. The next mounts up we're going to talk about will come from Garrison Invasions and there will be four different mounts up for grabs from this content. First of all, there'll be the Gan Steel Maw, there'll be the Giant Cold Snout, the Smoky Direwolf, and the Shadow Hide Pearl Tusk. And these are on a fairly low drop chance, probably the lowest in this video that we'll be talking about. But the way Garrison Invasions work is you'll be fending off mobs and gaining points, and the max points you can get will award you with a Platinum Ranking. And once you hit Platinum, you'll get a Bronze Bag, a Silver Bag, a Gold Bag, and a Platinum Bag. And both the Gold Bag and the Platinum Bag can give any of those four mounts. They're on about a 2% drop chance, but you've got four mounts that you can get from two different bags that you'll get pretty easily. Garrison invasions aren't too difficult, and you can do that once per character per week. So in the beginning, when you've not got any of these mounts, the odds are somewhat in your favor to see one somewhat quickly, but towards the end, when you only need one or two mounts, that's when it's going to become an, you know start getting a lot more difficult. The way garrison invasions work, you will need a garrison unlocked, and you will need to get it to level 2 at least. Once you have a level 2 or 3 garrison, there'll be an NPC in your garrison that will sell you an item called a missive. You'll pick up one that's kind of local to your garrison. You'll go out, you'll kill mobs, you'll fill up the bar, you'll head back to your garrison, and once you hand that in, it should proc the garrison invasion quest. Pick up the quest, talk to the NPC, begin the invasion, and then you just want to run around and kill mobs and be somewhat proactive. It used to be that the NPCs would do all the damage for you because they scaled to level, but they changed that at some point, so now you do need to be a little bit more proactive to get your Platinum ranking. Get Platinum, open your Golden and Platinum bags, and you'll have a chance of getting one of those four mounts from them. While we're still in Draenor, our next stop for some rare drops is going to be Tenen Jungle, and in that zone there'll be four rares of interest. There'll be Doom Roller, Vengeance, Terror Fist, and also Death Talon, and killing these will give you around a 10% chance of getting something called the Rattling Iron Cage, which when opened will 100% chance give you one of three mounts, one of them being the Warsong Diafang, the Armored Razorback, and also the Tundra Ice Hoof. Now, these rares can be a little tricky to get your hands on though, because they are on a 1-3 to three hour respawn, which is pretty rough, and they also die instantly. So I would definitely recommend making use of grouping up with people, and sitting in the spawn locations, and being on like PvP mode, stuff like that and just makes things a little bit easier but definitely be where they spawn because they will die instantly so you do need to be ready for that and kill it and you'll have around a 10 percent chance of getting one of the mounts now the downside to these is you can get duplicates so if you do get two rattling iron cages there is a world where you end up with two warsong diafangs but once again if you've not got any of these mounts then it is a decent one to go after because 10 percent chance is fairly friendly the next mounts we're going to talk about will come from Argus, and if you've never unlocked Argus before, there will be a video in the description down below that'll help you get Argus unlocked and make your way there. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a bunch of rares within the various zones of Argus that will drop a mount straight up. They'll have about a 3-ish percent drop chance, so it's not low, but it's not amazingly high. But I just find these very nice to go for because there's quite a few rares that can drop a mount, so you'll end up with quite a few kills of these while you're in Argus. And they are once per day per character, and they are on like a four hour-ish rotation. So say one of the rares is up currently in the rotation, it should respawn within a minute or two. And if it's not in the rotation, you will have to come back, you know, two, three hours later, four hours even, and then see if the rares have rotated and see if that one that you're still missing is in the current rotation. Hopefully that makes sense. So there are going to be a few different rares that are in the various different zones in Argus we're going to talk about. The first zone that we'll talk about is Aerodeath. And there is going to be a rare called Wrangler Kravos there, and they can drop the Maddened Chaos Runner. The next one up will be the Venom Tail Skyfin, and that can drop the Lambent Mana Ring. And then finally, there will be the Screek the Devourer, and that can drop the Acid Belcher. So keep that in mind if one of these aren't up, or if all of these aren't up, as I said, come back a few hours later, see if they're available in this current rotation, and then you'll be able to get your kill on those rares, and they can be killed once per day per character. The next zone up is going to be the Antoran Wastes, and here we'll find Blister Maw, which can drop the Crimson Slaver Maw, Houndmaster Kerax, which can drop the Vile Fiend. And then there's going to be a weird one, which is the Biletooth Nasher. But this can come from two different rares. So two different rares within this zone can drop the same mount. And that'll be Priscilla, and that'll also be Vraxthal. So if you find any of those two rares, you've got your chance at that Biletooth Nasher. And you can kill both of those once each for that chance at the Biletooth Nasher as well. 
So that's it for the rares that can give that like 3% drop chance mount. But there is something else for us to talk about. There's going to be some more eggs for us to farm here. And those are going to be the fell spotted eggs. There's going to be a ton of mounts that you can get from the fell spotted eggs. There'll be the dark spore mana ray, the scintillating mana ray, the vibrant mana ray, fell glow mana ray. So four different mounts that come from these eggs. And these eggs are on about a 35% drop chance. So pretty reasonable. But then the amount from the egg itself will be on about a 5% drop chance. So not too bad, not too good either. It will take five days for these eggs to open. But the nice thing is you'll never get a duplicate from these mounts. You're never going to get the same one twice. And you can have multiple eggs at once. These aren't unique. So you can get multiple eggs on the go in your bags that all have their own timer and they'll be ticking down. So you should have a reasonable chance of seeing a mount fairly quickly from these two. In terms of where you're going to get these eggs from, there's going to be these Panthara cat rares in a few of the zones. The first one will be Aradath, and you'll find Kara the Pale here, and you'll also find Sabul. And then if we head over to Antoran Waste, we'll find Varga, and then finally in Crocoon, we'll find Narua. So all of these different rares will all be up at some point during the day, as I said in that 4 hour rotation thing. And you can kill all of these once per day for that 35% chance of getting yourself the egg. So I definitely would recommend doing that while you're in Argus too. So Argus is just quite nice because there's quite a lot going on. And you'll typically find yourself picking up a rare mount fairly quickly from doing the content here. Next up we'll be talking about the BFA feature which is Warfront. Some of the old zones of Raffi Highlands and Darkshore become a new phase. Whether being sieged by the Horde or Alliance. And within this new phase, there'll be a bunch of rares, and some of those rares have chances of dropping mounts on around a 5% drop chance, so definitely not bad odds at all. Now, to get to these Warfront zones, if you've never done this content before, you will need to have unlocked your world quest within BFA, so that'd be your world quest with the Kulturus and um, the Zandalar, and there is a bit of criteria behind that too, you need to go get your Heart of Azeroth, so I would recommend looking into that if you haven't done that yet. But we're going to assume you have your BFA World Quest unlocked. You have access to the Raffi, Highlands, and Darkshore phases for Warfronts. And we can head out there and start killing the rares. Now, there will be a portal if your faction is in control of these zones currently. And that will be found within your Boralus or within the High Ab Harbor of the Great Seal. And you'll be able to head straight there. If that's not the case, you'll have to make your own way there, unfortunately. So first up, we'll be talking about our Raffi Highlands. And the first rare we'll talk about is one that can give a mount for both Horde and Alliance, but it's in different locations depending on your faction. So that will be either the Highland Mustang for Alliance, which will drop from Doom Rider Helgrim, or it'll be the Broken Highland Mustang, which will drop from Knight Captain Aldrin. Doom Rider Helgrim being the Alliance version, and Horde having the Knight Captain Aldrin to kill. There is another one here as well that does change its location based on who's currently in control of Arafi Highlands. If your faction's in control, then he'll be in the opposite faction's mind. So if Alliance is in control, you want to head over to the Horde Mines and you'll find him within there and vice versa. You'll find Overseer Crix in there and he'll drop the Little Dunker. The next one up will be from Beast Rider Kama, which is going to be a troll. And you'll find the Mount Swift Albino Raptor come from this. Next up will be from Neymar the Slayer and this will be the Wither Bark Diowing. And then finally we have Skull Ripper which is going to drop from Skull Ripper. And you shouldn't be waiting very long for these rares to respawn. It should be about a 5 to 10 minute respawn timer. So that is all the mounts that can drop from Arafi Highlands. But before we move on to talk about the Darkshore rares. Let's talk about how often you can actually kill the rares in this zone and Darkshore. Because it works the same in both of these places. So it doesn't reset every day or even every week. Instead, your ability to kill these rares resets every Warfront cycle. And this is where people get quite confused. All you need to know really is when that portal is in your base, that is when it's all cycled back to the beginning and your faction is in control again. So if you head to Boralus, for example, and you see the Arafi Highlands portal, and then two days later the portal is gone, and then the portal comes back again, once that portal is back, it means it's done a full cycle, your faction is in control again and now these rares have a chance to be killed once more for their loot. So it has to go through all the various stages of you being in control, the opposite faction attacking, you preparing to take it back, you attacking it and then you've taken it back. Once it gets to the point where you've taken it back again, these rares are eligible to be killed again. It's a little bit hard to keep track of and it is kind of confusing but hopefully that helps you understand it a little bit more. So let's move over to Darkshore next and there'll be the Ashlar Anir which is going to drop the Ashen Veil Chimera. 
And then there's going to be some of these rares that kind of change based on your faction. So if you're Horde, you'll be able to kill Blackpaw. And if you're Alliance, you'll be able to kill Agtha Wormwood, and that'll give the Blackpaw mount. Next up will be the Kaldori Night Saber, which if you're Horde will drop from Shadow Claw, and if you're Alliance will drop from Cross Blood Rage. And then finally we have the Captured Umbra Night Saber, which if you're Alliance will drop from Moxo the Beheader, and if you're Horde it'll drop from Ethyl Dewfire. Once again, exactly the same as Arathi, you'll have to wait for this to cycle all the way back, so the portal being in your base to go to Darkshaw, that disappears, and then once it comes back again, You'll know it's reset and you can go in and kill the rares once more. We'll be heading over to the moor next and we'll be trying to find the fallen charger because if you do get a kill on this you'll have around a 10% chance of getting the fallen charger mount which looks really good by the way but getting a kill on this can be a little bit annoying to be honest but it's great if you're doing other stuff at the same time because you can park your character in a camp group and just sit there and wait until it spawns just do make sure you're kind of keeping an eye on your wow screen and then kill it and you'll have around a 10% chance of getting the mount. The way this works is it can be killed once per day for its loot, and it is on quite a long respawn. It's like 4 to 12 hours, I believe, around there, 4 to 16. Something very, very kind of crazy long. The saving grace, though, is when it spawns, it'll run, and if it runs to the end of its kind of path, it'll despawn. And if it does end up despawning, it will respawn back faster. It's around an hour-ish for it to respawn again. So you want to try and find a group that knows it's going to be respawning soon or they've been waiting a really long time in general. And then that way you know you're not waiting too much longer for it. But once you do kill it, you can kill it once per day and you will have around a 10% chance of getting a mount, which is fairly generous. As I said, you will see quite a few of these drop in a group. You'll need to head into Torghast for the next mount we're going to talk about, which will be the Colossal Umbra Hide Morat, or which will be learned from the sturdy Silver Morat Harness. And this will come from any end boss in layer 13 and above of like a standard Torghast ring. So it doesn't matter which one you pick as long as it's a standard wing. Killing the boss in a 13 and above will give you a chance at getting that mount. And if you have the Adamant Vault perk unlocked and you do a flawless run, the end boss of Adamant Vault will also have a chance of doing that mount too. So it is definitely recommended to be trying to do flawless runs because then you'll get to the end of the normal layer 13 boss. And then you'll have the Adamant boss very shortly after too. So two chances very quickly and we can knock out tall gas runs very easily now uh, obviously with the gear we've got and as we move into the next expansion as well it's only going to become easier so runs of this are very quick in terms of drop rate we aren't entirely sure but checking comments most people are getting this in between like 10 and 30 runs and with how quickly you can do a tall gas it's very reasonable to grind this out and get yourself the mount in a, a decent amount of time the final mount we're going to be talking about will be the Colossal Plague Spew Morat, which will come from Iska's Morat Leash. And this will drop from Ruve Gorger of Ruin, which is tied to Iska Outrider of Ruin. And it'll be on about a 5% chance to drop, which isn't too bad, although this one is a little bit of a pain to get to spawn. And I mainly wanted to talk about this now because this is going to be harder to get your hands on in Dragonflight just due to less people doing this content. So you'll find Iska over in Xerath Mortis. And over in the kind of desert -y area, there'll be a place where he can spawn. He shares his spawn with two other mobs as well, two other rares. And the way this guy is spawned is by kind of killing the rares within the zone. And that's why I'm saying it's going to be harder as we move into Dragonflight, because there's going to be less people doing this content. So you want to be hanging around in the desert -y zone, and you want to be looking for groups that basically say it's, it's up. You can be trying to proc it yourself by going around and killing the rares if you want to. Just be quick though because once it is spawned it will have a shield that lasts for like a minute or two and you need to get to it before that shield goes away before people start killing it. But typically you get this via a group that's how I pretty much find my kills is looking through the group finder and you'll find someone who has a group up for Iska or for Ruv. It's the same thing. Join that group and the mount funnily enough drops from Ruv, which has no other loot on its table apart from the mount. So you can typically tell if you've got the mount pretty early on once Ruv dies. If it has loot, you've got your mount. If it doesn't have loot, you've not got the mount. Simple as that. And this is on a daily lockout, so you can kill this once per day at a chance for your mount. So I hope you enjoyed this video and it gives you something else to do while you're waiting for Dragonflight to launch and all the new cool stuff coming. A little bit of something to do, some mount grinding to do in the meantime. Outside of that, look out for more videos coming soon, especially Dragonflight stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.